Well, here I am back again on second side. I just kind of bailed myself out as I was saying. Didn't I really sound official way I was talking about all, asking all those important uh, navigating terms. I was also saying there, Louisa, you should be glad you never have me for a navigator. Brian's tried to teach me a couple of times. It just doesn't really sink in. All the neat little problems of where you can how much gas do you need if you can go so many miles on so many gallons and depending on what the wind is and stuff I tell you we'd be down over the desert every time a good hundred miles away from our destination even if we're only even if the entire destination was only 150 miles away I'm sure I'd still get us down <laughs> but uh, Brian's a good navigator good pilot and uh, you must be a pretty good pilot yourself kind of fun flying in that little green machine he took me down the Ohio River uh, I guess she was about a about a year ago that was enjoyed that I still think about it. in fact the National Geographic had a article on the Ohio River a couple months ago and brought back a lot of memories flying over the big green valley you think of the Ohio River I know it's just like at your doorstep from but from Seattle that's a long ways away. It's another part of the, that's another country as far as we're concerned. <laughs> of course I suppose the same is true for you when you think about any places out in the northwest area. You guys ought to fly your uh, green machine out to Vista sometime this summer. Come out in the summer where it's nice, Brian. Instead of during the winter when you just freeze your little tail off. <laughs> Now that you've uh, done Columbia and the Caribbean, where's your next trip going to be? You still have that urge to fly the perimeter of the South American continent? We're still kind of toying with the idea of heading up to the Canadian Rockies this fall, doing some camping up there, maybe leave in the middle of September and spend a couple weeks up to Calgary and Edmonton and down through Alberta and uh, get some of the national parks up in that area. You know we're so close to Canada but uh, I think the furthest north I've ever been is maybe 20 miles north of Vancouver. That's not very far north. I think Canada's a, has a lot to offer in that country. I think I haven't been to Victoria for years. Literally about 15 or 20. That's another neat city. A lot of people take their bicycles and uh, hop the ferry, and uh, you can get up to Van or Victoria. I think it's about ten dollars round the round trip. I'd say fifteen dollars round trip. It takes you about four hours to get up there. You leave early at about seven thirty in the morning and get up there late morning. It takes about four or five hours. Then you can spend most of the afternoon, and you come back, and you're back in Seattle around. Uh, 10 o'clock at night, so you have a good day, and it's a pretty flat city, so you can do quite a bit of bicycling. And of course, there's uh, cycling on there's some islands up north of here it's called the San Juan Islands between Canada and the state of Washington, where it's also kind of fun to hop the ferries and do some bicycling. Or I suppose you can also do the same on a small motorbike. It's even more fun, I just find fly over them too. <laughs> Green machine would do good. I remember when uh, Brian was out here, he was uh, one day, it was the middle of the winter, and God, it really was. Seattle is kind of notorious for all its rain, and we usually do have quite a bit during the winter, but that, especially last winter in particular, he had a, about a week there, and it was nice, practically the whole time, and uh, you know, I flew around. One day he went down just to turn over the airplane and there was Mount Rainier sitting out there all by itself and the ice cream cone, as some people kind of call it. He went out and had a really nice flight around it. I can just imagine what it looked like. I'd like to see your pictures on that one of these days. I bet they turned out real well. Well, I think my friend's about ready to wake up. I think I heard him 
heard him in there, so I think I'll sign off for a while. Maybe we'll get Denise back on here. And see if we can't get this thing off to you in the next couple couple days or so. So, until later. Ciao. Hi there. Um, Brian and Louisa. I guess Dave left me uh, some space here to talk. <laughs> I don't know uh, what interesting things I can tell you. Uh, I, my days are pretty much full with Eric. He's just really a lot of fun and um, but it does keep me busy. I don't have a lot of time. He gets up in the morning and he eats and he goes back to sleep for a couple hours and then then he's up again and um, eating and and playing. He can play by himself for maybe oh half hour to 45 minutes and the rest of the time I have to entertain him. And I always thought babies would sleep a lot during the day but he takes oh, a couple naps but they only last like 45 minutes or so. So just as I get involved in a project or whatever, it seems like he's awake again. So I really don't have an awful lot of time to spare and to work on things that I like to do. But I'm not complaining because he's just, like I said, a really a lot of fun. I um, was kind of overwhelmed at first when he came home and I didn't know how to take care of a baby and uh, he cried a lot and I just was uh, afraid that I wasn't quite doing something right <laughs> but now it just seems like uh, he's always been with us and, and you learn motherhood real quickly um, Dave's real good with him too and that makes a difference it, he uh, helps me take care of him, and uh, so it's not just a one-person job. It's uh, you need two people because occasionally I need a, a break to sit back and read a magazine, so Dave can take care of Eric for a while. But we uh, do manage to do a few things during the day. I have a lot of um, friends that are home and. Uh, we uh, play, or we go out shopping and do various things. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether Dave told you or not, or I know we we wrote you that my parents were home in January, and so the month of January went by real fast. And then in February, it seems like I spent most of the month looking for houses. A realtor would call up, and I'd go out and look around and that it was a discouraging project I hated doing that because you'd go and you'd see these houses and they cost so much money and they're just you think ugh I don't want that and then you wonder if, wait for your price range you wonder if you could ever get a house and um, well, I think we're, we're real pleased with our house I'm just real excited to move in and doesn't have a lawn so we'll be busy putting the lawn in and, and we'll go up to our cabin at Lake Quinault and bring back some trees and some ferns and stick those in the ground so it won't be um, so barren I just I'm, I've lived with trees all my life it seems like it seems funny to have a house without any trees in it I like to see those big evergreens all around me and blowing in the wind well, um, what else have I been doing? I've been taking a yoga class. I thought I'd better get my body back into shape again. I, uh, it was kind of fun um, and very uh, relaxing exercise. Oh, there's Eric over there. I better check on him. Brian, I bet that was a weird feeling when you um, walked into your old apartment and found things still hanging where you had left them. Boy, that makes you think about what time is and uh, how things just really don't change. I, I can't believe that, that they're still living there and you could almost picture yourself coming in from 
being downtown and coming home and <laughs> there you were. I bet that was a weird feeling. But I, but I envy you getting to, to see Medellin and Bogota again. I really um, get a little homesick at times for um, for Medellin. Especially around Christmas time when you think about the lights and walking down there with the being nice and warm and everything's so lively and people walking the streets. Sometimes we really miss that because people just don't walk around here. They're always taking their cars here and there and everywhere. And you don't get that atmosphere. Dave and I like to take walks, well, especially, um, you know, with Eric. Sometimes he gets real fussy, so we pop him into the front pack or right now he goes into the back pack and we just walk around the neighborhood and even at night we you know would take a walk but there is never anybody else out walking I kind of miss that uh, maybe one of these days when our, we get so short on energy we'll find ourselves having to uh, walk again good exercise Occasionally I get a uh, letter from my friend Ophelia and then um, the other day we got a letter from this lady that we lived across the street from and she was telling us how the uh, problems with the gaminis is getting um, worse and she was getting on the bus and her earrings were ripped out of her ears and you have to be very very careful with things because uh, they get stolen very easily and she was also telling about all the kidnappings they're really kind of a shame um, you know, to have that going on uh, I guess Dave told you about the guy from um, Seattle area that was kidnapped here and that's really a shame I know Dave's parents uh, heard that and he said, oh, I'm glad you're home now. Everyone used to always worry about us down there. And I never really thought we were in any danger, but uh, who knows, I guess we could have been. Brian, we were trying to tickle Eric there for you. <laughs> See if he could uh, give you a, a few words of wisdom. He does like to be tickled, though. He just bursts out laughing when you tickle him under his chin or under his arms. It's kind of fun. Well, Dave, help. What can I say? <laughs> words of wisdom. He's sitting over there playing with Eric, just smiling. He, he says he's already talked on this. He's making me fill it up. Okay. okay. Well, enough for today. We'll finish it tomorrow. Ciao. Hi again, Brian and Louisa. Uh, a couple days have passed by since we last spoke on the tape and uh, we're determined to get it finished this week for sure and get it into the mail so you won't think that we've completely forgotten about you. Um, we uh, had a rather fun weekend. Um, it's now Monday and the weekend went very quickly. We uh, yesterday went up to Mount Rainier. Remember Brian? Good old Mount Rainier. We um, took a drive up to Paradise where we had gone with you when you were here visiting because we hadn't seen any snow yet <coughs> and we thought we just couldn't let a winter go by without seeing any snow at all and of course Eric he cared less about seeing snow but we thought he should 
get initiated somewhat. So we drove up there and sure enough it was snowing and it was beautiful and the snow was covering the trees and it's been such an unusual winter that there really wasn't as much snow as usual. Um, Dave was saying that the record snowfall up there I think is 1300 inches but the average is usually about 600 and uh, that is usually the record um, world record for snowfall up there at the paradise where we had taken you. But it was fun and we went and walked through the woods and bundled Eric up in his snowsuit and walked around and uh, it was a really pretty drive. We were kept hoping that the sun would shine through but no such luck. So, and then, uh, oh, <coughs> Friday night we played some bridge and uh, and stayed up until 3 o'clock in the morning which of course doesn't always uh, always makes one a little bit tired and you kind of regret it the next day. Eric lately has been uh, getting up in the middle of the night. Uh, I got to bed at 3 and he decided to wake up again at uh, 4.30. Uh, I told him that wasn't really he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and, uh, but, who knows about kids? They just kind of do what they want to do. Um, I'm trying to think, let's see, what else have we accomplished since we last talked to you? Um, Dave has been, uh, working on this rocking chair, his little bit of, uh, uh, refurnishing and he's kind of gotten a kick out of it and he's really done a nice job on it uh, only problem is is that it squeaks every time I get in it to rock it squeaks so he's out in the garage right now fixing it up again so it won't squeak uh, last Friday afternoon I got a phone call and answered the phone and someone said hi this is Ann I thought, Ann? What Ann? And here enough, it was the Anthral calling me in the middle of the afternoon. Um, I don't know. Well, whenever we make a long distance phone call, we always wait for the rates to go down. But she just felt like calling in the afternoon, and it was nice to talk with her. She had, we had sent her a, a picture of Eric, and she wanted to call and say that she liked seeing what he looked like. Um, she is fine and um, was saying that Jim isn't doing quite as much traveling right now because Carter cutting down the um, uh, monies for the water programs <clears throat> but I guess in April he'll take a trip down to Peru and uh, all their kids are doing fine uh, getting big I guess it's hard to believe little Fernando is in kindergarten and going into first grade next year. But Time does that. Brian, do you still read Time magazine like we used to read it in Columbia? I find that I don't always have time to read the newspaper, but I always seem to have a chance to... Uh, read Time Magazine if I'm feeding Eric or uh, at night or I always try to read it to find out so I'm, I'm at least a little bit knowledgeable about what's going on in the world. Um, I uh, have been somewhat favorably and impressed by Carter. Um, I did vote for him. That, uh, I think I voted for him more for the fact that I wanted a change rather than that I knew that he would really be the answer to our problem. I'm not so sure he is, but um, at least I do have to admire the fact that he's assertive and a very activist-oriented president. I think that April 20th, the day that uh, he comes out with his energy policy, is going to be quite interesting and uh, awakening to many Americans. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be composed of, but you can bet that uh, 
gasoline is going to be more expensive or a little bit harder to come by. I, um, Dave's father, who sells cars, has said that it uh, seems like Americans have just completely forgotten the uh, rationing that they had to go through. You know, when we were down in Colombia, they had to wait in lines, and gas was so hard to get. And they were predicting that uh, everyone would go towards the smaller cars. Well, now they are having a horrible time trying to sell the small cars. They're all going towards the medium or even the bigger cars. Americans just doesn't seem like they want to give up any freedom or any... They don't want to conserve, no matter how important it is. And seems like the only way for them to finally realize that they can't have the gas guzzlers is going to be with the, the little stringent rules placed upon it. Who knows? Um, our car gets, what, about 25, 26 miles to the gallon, which isn't all that bad, but it still isn't real good. I've got to admit that we enjoy the luxury of being able to drive up to our cabin at Lake Quinault, which is about 150 miles, and uh, if gas does become more expensive, well, who knows, maybe we won't be able to do that as often. And that's our, our little luxury that we like to be able to um, afford. And then uh, Carter, I don't know that he has very much expertise in the um, foreign um, department. That worries me a bit. Um, although that's a, a realm of government that I suppose comes with more experience, but he does seem to be kind of uh, naive about some of the uh, policies. Um, but overall, I think um, I'm not disappointed. Uh, he's sure kept with a lot of his promises that he said he would do. Hey, I just listened back on part of this tape and it distorted my voice to some extent there. Um, I think the, the tape recorder s slows up a bit and then it speeds up again. So if I start having a fu funny sounding voice, please disregard. Well, it's been nice chatting with you. I'm going to let Dave finish the tape. He said he had a few things to relate to you. So, um, again, uh, we really enjoyed your tape and hope we get another one. Talk to you later. Bye. Hello there again, Louisa and Brian. I just, just listened here on the last part of Denise's blurb, and she said that I had a few things important to tell you. And uh, I'm not so sure I do. But nonetheless, I think I'll just sit here and socialize away, pretend like you're here, and uh, believe it or not, I think we might get this thing out in the mail to you. We've been working on it for about two weeks here, but it's been very much off and on. It's one of those things that once you get on a tape, you uh, make great progress, and you go, 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 and you get interrupted, and you stop it. Doggone, it takes a while to get started again because you always think you don't have anything important to say. Of course, I think that's always the case. Well, yeah, I guess Denise told you about our trip back up to Mount Rainier. It's been about a year since uh, we were up there with you, Brian. This time it didn't have, I guess it had about as much snow as when you were there. But not all that much compared to what's supposed to have in March. Well, the old work's been keeping me out of trouble. I've been, uh, for about the past four and a half months, been working on a, a payroll and labor system for uh, Canadian and Kenworth for their uh, plant in uh, Vancouver. And it's just starting to get towards the end. We should be implementing the system next month or so. So that's kind of gratifying. This is my first real project since I moved into systems and uh, it's kind of different having a project and keeps going on for four and five months but it's interesting work and uh, keeps me out of trouble and uh, one thing about systems there always seems to be a lot to learn and 
no one has all the answers, and just as soon as you think you do have all the answers, they, they change the ground rules on you. So, uh, but I guess they call that job security. <laughs> sure hope so, anyway. Don't really know when we'll be traveling out your way again with a packed car. I don't see anything in the foreseeable future unless I get on some project where they're going to be implementing out in Chillicothe. I keep my fingers crossed and hope that somehow I know that I can work on something like that. That'd be fun to come out and see you because Chillicothe really isn't all that far from your place. One of these days, you'll hear from us. And we'll be out there. At least I'll be out there for sure. And with any luck at all, maybe we can bring Denise and Eric while he's still flying for free. Got to take advantage of that free traveling while you can. What did you think of uh, Indira Gandhi being defeated there in India? That was kind of a shock. I really wasn't expecting it. The news media had been saying that the election was going to be kind of close. Right, that's, this is going to be your, one of the real, one of the tougher parts of her political career. But you know how the media always sometimes exaggerates things like this. But they, the incumbent always seems to win. But this time she didn't. She didn't even get her seat back in the the parliament. And the last, and even her uh, party went down. It's no longer the majority. That's that's really kind of a surprise. I wasn't expecting that at all. I can't help but think that it isn't one of the best things that could happen to uh, India. Eleven years is a long time for anybody to be in power, especially since the last uh, year and a half. It's been kind of uh, dictatorial nonetheless, and uh, I guess the people of India still are after human rights a little more than their uh, is or their monetary freedom <laughs> or what have you freedom from hunger of course she'd been preaching that in their last election and they hadn't really given it to her so she was preaching it again this time and I guess they didn't really believe her but nonetheless quite an upset it's kind of hard to uh, believe there's a country with uh, so many people voting and they have to spread out over three or four days like that. What a bureaucratic organization they must have to tally all those votes and to uh, avoid as much corruption as possible. I'm sure there must be some uh, finagling here and keeping the opposition from voting and vice versa and being ostracized if you vote and if you don't vote. But nonetheless, that's, uh, that's quite something. One of these days would be kind of interesting to go there. That's a long ways away from here. If you go one way, you might as well continue and go around the world. If you couldn't tell by now, Louisa, you could probably guess that I'm a, I'm a pretty good dreamer, especially when it comes to traveling. <laughs> I don't know if I dream quite as well as Brian does, but I uh, usually don't make, do quite as much, make all my dreams come true quite as fast as Brian does, but nonetheless, so. Uh, do love to dream. Give me a map and a book. I need things to see and do, and I'm ready. Speaking of dreaming, here it is uh, Tuesday night, and about time to start thinking about another weekend. I suppose we'll be heading up to uh, the Olympics this Friday night after work. It'll be nice if we get daylight savings time. We'll be able to get up there on the daylight, but right now it should just be about an hour after sunset before we get up there. It takes about uh, about three hours from uh, from our place, which isn't too bad. Then we head up Friday night, and uh, if it's nice we'll, on Saturday. We'll do a little hiking, put Eric in the backpack, and tromp around the trails. If not, then uh, we'll stay inside. We have a scrapbook we're working on, and we're finally getting some prints made. We've had some prints made now. A guy throw them in a book and. Uh, do a little labeling, which is, it's always kind of fun because it's being in the rainforest, we do get the rain and you can always hear it pitter pattering on the roof, which is nice and relaxing, kind of getting away, get out of the city. 
then on uh, Saturday night my folks are coming up then on Sunday we're going to uh, take out a couple of trees that are kind of shading the area around our place because there's an awful lot of trees there my folks have had that uh, cabin so long God, it's been about going on 50 years now that uh, places where do you think all oh, it's just a small little tree and as the years go on pretty soon small little trees turn into big trees and big trees eventually take out all the light in the area so uh, occasionally you have to do a little thinning and National Forest Service doesn't really care of course they do the same on their lots that's yeah, always kind of good for your machismo to uh, bring out the chainsaw and watch the watch the trees fall and then, of course then you get some firewood you always need firewood. So that'll be our week, and then we'll probably head home on uh, Sunday evening and be ready for another week. Another week in the web. Or I shouldn't say that. Another week in salt mines. <laughs> well, I just looked at the tape, and looks like I'm about at the end. Thanks again for your uh, tape and the trip you just sent to us. We really enjoyed it. And I hope to hear from you again soon. And until later. Have a good week, and until later, hasta luego, amigos.